going to pick up today and, and start at Amos chapter 3. We're going to start at verse 7 and 8. But before we do that, we, we left off, we kind of ran out of time in our last program. As I was talking about a, a, a very important scripture. In verse 6, one of those questions, rhetorical questions that the Lord asked through Amos was, if calamity occurs in a city, has not the Lord done it? You know, I think sometimes it's only the lawyers and insurance guys that may have a better handle on on this than the theologians do. <laughs> See, everything bad that happens, everything bad that happens that they might have to pay for, they blame it on God. It's an act of God. But have you ever considered the possibility? I want to give you something from the Word of God in the book of Job. It says in Job 2, I'm going to read verses 9 and 10. Then Job's wife said to him, do you still hold fast to your integrity? Curse God and die. But he said to her, you speak as one of the foolish women speaks. Shall we indeed accept good from God and not accept adversity? In all this, Job did not sin. So if I say that, now you think I'm sinning because I say, you know, listen, God's in control. Things that happen, things that we see as calamities going on in the world can be the hand of God at work. Mm -hmm. Now you know what? He can use the devil. He can use Satan as a tool in That's his right. hand. But it's still God who is in control. Absolutely. Don't ever believe differently than that. And if you didn't like that, you're certainly not going to like this. I'm now going to read from Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 1. I'm going to read verses 24 through 30. He says, Because I called and you refused, I stretched out my hand and no one paid attention. And you neglected all my counsel and did not want my reproof. I will even laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your dread comes. When your dread comes like a storm and your calamity comes on like a whirlwind, when distress and anguish come on you, then they will call on me, but I will not answer. They will seek me diligently, but they shall not find me, because they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. They would not accept my counsel. They spurned all my reproof. I am telling you. Where was that again? Proverbs, Proverbs chapter 1, verses 24 through 30. You, you had better understand this. God is a God who is there, who is ready, willing, desiring to hear from us, mm -hmm. for us to be in touch with him. But you can't go on and on and on rejecting the word of the Lord. And then when your trouble comes, thinking, well, you know, maybe he will and maybe he won't. But he has the right to not do it. That's right. Okay. You have to remember Deuteronomy 28. Mm -hmm. This is Deuteronomy 28 is the choice between if you obey God, if you hear him and obey him, all those blessings are going to come upon you. But the other side of that coin is if you hear his voice and disobey him, all of these curses, and there's more curses than there are blessings, okay? Think about the fact. You know, what? we've been saved. Hallelujah, we've been mm -hmm. saved. What have we been saved from? Well, we've been saved from sin. We've been saved from the curse of sin. We have been saved, Paul wrote, from the wrath of God. There is such a thing as the wrath of God in the New Testament. That's right. Okay. This is why. Now, it's not for us. If you look at Romans chapter 12, God says, that, you know, if your enemy's hungry, feed him. If he's thirsty, give him to drink. We are not to return evil for evil, but we're to return good for evil. But before it says that, it says, revenge is mine, saith the Lord. I will repay. I will repay. And God will repay, okay? You better get that through your head. When Jesus comes back, now, you know, he came back. He came into this world the first time, meek and humble. Here is the King of kings and the Lord of lords, born as a child in a, not even room for many in, but in a stable. Won't be that way come next time. It will not be that way next time. He's coming back riding a white horse with a sword in his hand and fire shooting from his eyes. There's a song that was written in the mid-1800s uh, here in the United States. And I, I'm, I'm doing this, I don't really recall. Oh, my eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. He's coming. He's coming with that wrathful sword. He is coming. 
be on his side and you have nothing to worry about. <laughs> but now is the time to do that. Now is the time. Not when you see that coming. I don't know, okay? Today is the day. Of salvation. If you hear his voice today, don't harden your heart. Like the people of God did out in the wilderness. Oh,